What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna to give you my unbiased opinion on this Mikey 85 millimeter F1.8. Buying a new lens can be pretty stressful, especially when you depend on watching reviews from influencers on YouTube. You never know what kind of review you're gonna get. It's kinda like a crapshoot. Personally, I've watched over 25 reviews on this particular lens. Half of those reviews were done by semi or large influencers, while the other half were done by people like me, people like you, the photographer that doesn't have a huge bank account and can't afford the latest and greatest. So I'm going to give you my 100% unbiased opinion on this Mikey 85mm f1.8. And we'll see if I agree or disagree with the majority of influencers on YouTube. So the first thing they say right out of the gate is build quality. They say the lens feels plasticky and cheap, kind of like a toy. They also say that most first party lenses are built with all metal construction. And in comparison, this seems fragile. So I'm going to agree and disagree here. Is this lens made of plastic? Yes, yes it is. But in no way does it feel like a toy or fragile. For those of you that have ever used a Yong Nuo 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter, you know what I'm talking about. Those ones are plasticky. They have plastic mounts, but they still take great photos. So the build quality doesn't really affect whether or not I would use it. Also, since we're on that subject, let me introduce you to the Canon 18 to 55 kit lens. This is much lighter than this. This feels much more durable than this does. This feels like a toy. This feels like something that I would give my son to practice on, while this isn't. Just saying. Another thing you see a lot on reviews is, oh, this lens is super heavy. Oh, it's super heavy. It's so, it's so tiring to carry around. But then in this case, they're like, oh, it's not very heavy. Pick your poison. Do you want something heavy or do you want something lightweight? Personally, it doesn't matter to me. As long as the lens works and I get the results that I want, that's what counts. Next up is autofocus. Now, I'm gonna have to agree with just about everyone here. There is a focusing issue when it comes to this lens. It's not that it misses focus a lot, it's more like the focus is kinda unsure. Like, are you sure you wanna focus on that? What about this over here? And so it, it, there's a real issue there. So I will have to agree, there is a focusing problem. The one thing about the autofocus in this lens that really confused me is that it had a hard time focusing in good light, whereas in low light, it was quick. And it focused exactly where I wanted it to focus, every time. But as soon as I was in good light, not so much. However, in the end, if you're a patient enough photographer, you're gonna get the shot you want anyway, right? Next up, autofocus is too loud. I'll agree here, but usually, an 85 millimeter lens is used for portraits, correct? At least that's what I use them for. Now, when I'm shooting portraits and I'm shooting a model or a client, I usually have some sort of music going on. So I'm not gonna hear the autofocus and neither is the client. So I don't see how that becomes a problem. However, the other side of that coin is wedding portraits. Now, for those of you that shoot weddings, here's where you have to decide if it's too loud for your needs. The next is vignetting. Now, this should be a non-issue. This is an easy post-production fix, so I'll just disagree and I'll move on. The next one is the focusing ring is not dampened. Now, they're not wrong, but this is really what annoys me about some of these reviews. So let's go back. One of the issues, one of the cons was the focus was off, it was missing focus. The other one was the focus was too loud, right? So if the autofocus is too loud, use manual. Even if it's undampened, it's still quieter than autofocus, according to what they say. And if you miss focus using manual, you just need to get good. The problem is some of these influencers need to figure out what side of the fence they're actually on. So if they're photographers that rely on autofocus, then the focusing ring being not dampened shouldn't matter, should it? They don't use it, they use autofocus. See, pick a side. Next is chromatic aberration. Now this is just kind of a moot point. Does it have it? Yes. But 
some of the apps and programs like Lightroom, Affinity, and, and Topaz can get rid of this in like half a second, so it's not even really worth mentioning. This one kills me. It's not as sharp as first party lenses. Just think about that for a second. I think everyone would agree that if a lens that costs $179 is just as sharp as or sharper than a first party lens, then those manufacturers of those first party lenses need to get good because that shouldn't happen. Do you really expect a $179 lens to be just as sharp as the Canon counterpart? I don't. Which leads me into my first pro, the price. This lens is $179 on Amazon. So $179, 85 millimeter f1.8. Yes, please. That's kind of a no brainer, don't you think? Next is the bokeh or bokeh, however you choose to pronounce it. It's outstanding. The bokeh balls in the background are perfectly round. The blown out backgrounds are nice and creamy. It's everything that you're looking for when it comes to an 85 millimeter f1.8. It gives you everything you need right there. So in conclusion, I have no regrets buying this lens. It's better than what I had. What I had was a newer that didn't have autofocus. At least this has autofocus. So if I have to be patient, oh well. If it misses every now and then, no big deal. It comes with the territory. Even some of the finest lenses miss focus. The quality is good, the bokeh is outstanding, and you can't beat the price. So would I recommend this lens to anyone? I mean, I would, but really that depends on you, your wants, and your budget. I bought it because I wanted an 85 millimeter f1.8 with autofocus, and that's exactly what I got. So if you already have a first party 85 millimeter, chances are this lens is not for you. What counts is that this lens gets the job done in the end. If you need it, it's gonna do the job. So I hope this video has helped some of you guys make your decision on whether or not you would wanna buy this lens. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. I have this lens, I don't regret buying it. I enjoy using it. I'm just a little bit more patient than I was. So there's that, I hope you've enjoyed this review and uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.